That's one of my favorite songs, and Mark does it most beautifully. Thank you, Mark. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, as we come before you, we take to heart the scripture delivered today, the message that you have for each of us, your beloved children, that we might draw closer to you and to one another, that the inspiration of your Holy Spirit would give light and love and hope. And this message we share in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of times people assume that Easter is one day. You did Easter, you finished Easter, you move on. But there's a season of 50 days from Easter Sunday until Pentecost that we celebrate the resurrection, we celebrate the story of our Lord. The song Jerusalem tells the story from the hosannas to the cross to the resurrection to the new Jerusalem promised in the book of Revelation. As we gather to worship today, we know of situations around the world, within our own congregation, our own community, that challenge us, even push us to consider how Easter makes a difference, how the resurrection power of God is going to work in our own life experience together. When we hear our text this morning, Paul tells us, I can do all things in the one who strengthens me, Christ Jesus. It's comforting to imagine that God is saying to us personally, you don't need to be afraid or overwhelmed. I will walk with you through life. The power, the courage, the strength of Christ is yours. Let me offer it to you. Don't give up. Don't let this discourage you. This is more than a pep talk. This is more than some kind of slogan. Paul is reminding us that the resurrection power in Jesus Christ is accessible to us. We can be resilient. We can persevere because we are not alone. For Paul, it was to be able to continue his ministry, even under unfavorable circumstance. Paul had suffered rejection, ridicule, imprisonment. In fact, he is writing this letter to the Philippians while he is in prison. His message is about having the strength to stand when life is difficult. Even when the ground feels like it's shaking, even when you are weary from what life has thrown your way, there is strength to stand. Now, one of the keys to our life in faith is recognizing that we are not alone. Not only do we have the presence and power of God through his Holy Spirit, but we have our community. That is what the church is intended to be. That family of faith that comes together to encourage one another. John Wesley said, there is no such thing as a solitary religion. It's not you and God off in some private little place in the world. It's you and God, the presence of his spirit, and your gathered community of faith and friends. Our text from Job finds us first telling his friends that sometimes their advice or their analysis of his situation is cold and hurtful, but what he really needs is a companion on the journey who trusts in a good God. When Job declares, I know my Redeemer lives, he's offering a statement of faith, a trust in God, even in the future. No matter what my circumstance, God lives. He is Redeemer. 
He is a savior. God prevails. God is God. And I am not. From the earliest pages of Genesis throughout the entire Bible, we see that lives have been transformed and touched and shaped through God's presence. The clearest lessons include that God is transformational, not transactional. God is here to bring change and new life, not to exchange this for that. You see, this is real power. This is real promise. This is real deliverance. You and I, as part of the human condition, are a species that love to worship. We might worship a ball team. We might worship our new car. We might worship our job. But there's a reason in the earliest chapters of the Old Testament that God says, have no other gods. It's not only a statement of faith, it's a statement of access. Where will you find your strength? What will you worship and connect yourself to to make life meaningful? If you don't worship the divine, you might begin to worship things that distract you, anything that gets your attention and you will be ill-equipped to face life, to deal with challenges. In Genesis, Adam and Eve are given choices and advised not to taste of the tree of good and evil. Good is tov in Hebrew. Evil is varah. Don't touch good and evil all at once. You new creation, you Adam and Eve, new people. It's going to be too much for you. It's like telling your child, don't cross the street without holding my hand and looking both ways. We're not saying it because we're wanting to restrict our children from the joys of life. We're saying it because we want to protect them from the dangers. This is why God says, do not eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil. There's still true today that God wants to love and protect us, while at the same time offering to us many choices every single day. King David in Psalm 28, 7 tells us, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. With my song, I will praise him. Job 11 told us, you will be secure, because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. This is coming from a man who has experienced the worst of the worst, you will be secure because there is hope. Now, in many ways, the lives of David and Job and Paul give us hope. They are testimonies to how God has operated in the world throughout history. The God of our faith story raises us up. The God of our faith story is a deliverer a good God. In the Hebrew, it's very interesting that the word for adversity and difficulty is rah ra or va ra while the word for healing is ra va Take what is evil, take what is adverse, and let God heal it. ra va Jehovah Rapha means God heals us even through the worst, the worst evil, the worst pain, the worst adversity. Christ in us gives us strength. You see, what we have to draw from is so much bigger than ourselves. Some of you have lost people who are dear to you. 
Some of you have taken treatment for cancer or rehabilitation after a difficult health battle. Some of you are dealing with financial crisis or relationship difficulty. Some of you are having to make very big decisions about work or family, your future. Some of you are caring for aging parents. Whatever your circumstance, I'm here to tell you, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are not alone. God is good. And like a good parent, God is saying to you today, take my hand. Let us look both ways before we cross this street, this difficulty, this opportunity, this step. Take my hand. Let us look both ways. We can do this together. There's a wonderful song by a singer who just passed away this week. Her name is Mandisa. Her song is called Overcomer. Just take a breath and don't forget to hang on to his promises. He wants you to know you are an overcomer. Stay in the fight until the final round. You're not going under because God is holding you right now. You might feel down for a moment, feeling like it's hopeless. That's when he reminds you that you are an overcomer. The same man, the great I am, the one who overcame is living inside of you. So just hold tight. Fix your eyes on the one who holds your life. There's nothing he can't do. At its core, the message for today is talking about a different kind of victory. Victory in Jesus. It's so much bigger than your sports team winning an event, even though you're thrilled when they do. It's so much bigger than a career launch or a new opportunity. This is the victory of knowing and trusting that God is good and God has your back and invites you to be part of a community that will embody this fact. You are not alone. God is with you. David spent many years running from King Saul's jealousy and torment before he became Israel's most notable king in history. Job spent years of loss and grief and being overanalyzed by his friends who thought they were faithful before God restored his life even with a double portion. Paul went from being a persecutor to a man of faith in Christ He was a prisoner, he was released, and he impacted churches through letters for good and for God. David won his battles through faith in God. He embodied what it means to listen to God. Even when he stumbled and fell, he repented and returned. He knew his life had a higher purpose. He knew that God could use him for greater things. You see, Job knew that choosing faith in a good God wouldn't take away the pain. It wouldn't erase the suffering. But it would transform his pain into a testimony. For God is good. The pain would not subside. But his trust in God would take him to a new future. In Romans 8, it says, Paul told us the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we often do not know what to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes on our behalf. We may never know the why of our struggle. The why is usually the worst question to ask because you go in a spin downward, 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 downward. 
The better question is not to ask why did this happen to me, but what for? And how can I use this to show my complete trust in a good God who will deliver me? Not the why, but the what for. How can I be a testimony to God? Others may not be able to grasp why we could believe in a good God when things seem so fragile and tentative and difficult. You see, anyone can sing a song of praise on a good day, but our witness is to sing that song of praise even in the most difficult time, to persevere, to be resilient, even in the most difficult season of life. It's true, sometimes the difficult season is the one that brings us closest to God. When I moved here in 2015, I was coming to live closer to my dad, who had Alzheimer's. Two years earlier, after 28 years of marriage, I went through a divorce. My dog, a beautiful husky, constant companion for 14 years, passed away. My sister and mother had passed. I had a lot of heaviness in my life, yet my friend and the Bishop of Florida, Ken Carter, said I might have something for you, an amazing place, amazing people to serve amongst in Fort Lauderdale. My two sons were thriving, one in college and one early in his career. I began to come back to home, I grew up in Miami, And I saw people I knew from years ago, high school friends, college friends, five, who joined this church simply because I showed up. And then they got to know you. At this juncture, I step into my 10th year as your pastor. All I can say is God is good. I am certainly one of those overcomers. I have a lot of good news this year. Every day, I've learned to say, I know my Redeemer lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song of reflection on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. I love how Pastor Jill started with, we celebrate Easter all year long. We do. And we have to be reminded of that, that the same spirit that lifted Christ from the dead lives inside of you. 
And so as we go into this pastoral prayer, I, I want you to reflect on how Easter, yeah, the chocolate's probably gone, unless it's in my house, but how that Easter Jesus makes a difference in your life every day. Do you have to remind yourself daily? Are you leaning on your family of faith? That's who we are in this church. And it's not just to come and smile and say, happy Sunday, but yeah, there are some days you're going to have a rough time. And so it is sometimes to come and smile and say, I need some help. Lean on your church family. That's what we're here for. Will you please bow your heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, our life, the way we live as Christians is a lived expression of Jesus' story, of the resurrection story. You offer the power of Christ in me. The way that we're able to rejoice, to pray, and to connect with you, the way that we get the strength to stand is to let your truth, the truth of your word, be louder than our circumstances in this crazy world. Lord, we have some specific prayer concerns and prayer praises. Lord, we are lifting up those situations uh, around the world, that turmoil, all of those things that are happening when we turn on the news and just think, Lord, breathe on this. Put your hand of peace on this world. Father God, we especially lift up Israel and what's happening in that region of the world. Father, for the specific prayer request for health, for financial, for relationships, for those students that are now looking at the next step in school, where do they go next year, or what is their next chapter of life, we lift them up. And now, Father God, we will take a moment of silence to share with you what is most pressing on our individual hearts. Hear our prayer. Father God, may the work you begin in us continue through our lives and become greater and more beautiful expression of your love and of our faith. And we lift all these things up, saying the prayer that you taught us to pray in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand now for our closing hymn, Standing on the Promises.
session, I want to remind you, uh, make sure you registered your attendance and put it in the pedestal along. Uh, that's also where we receive our tithes and our offerings or gifts. And uh, that helps us know who was here and how we might reach out and connect with you. We're excited to have each of you with us this morning. Let us receive God's blessing and benediction. The Lord bless you and keep his face to shine upon you, that his love might shine through you, that you would receive the forgiveness of your sin and stand firm in your faith. He gives us strength to stand, for we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.